Hi everyone. I'm thrilled to be here with you today. Welcome to the session. For the next 40 minutes or so, we're going to be talking about some of the key fundamentals that go into pricing the jobs for your service. Things such as uh, knowing your expenses, knowing your labor costs and your other fixed expenses, understanding what a productivity rate is and how that affects how you charge. We're also going to learn some very key information about where not to look for answers to the question, how much should I charge? So sit back, grab your favorite note taking tool and get ready to learn. Hi everyone and welcome to this session on addressing the question of how much should I charge? My name is Sharon Cowan and I'm your session leader. For those who don't know me, I am a 30 year veteran of the janitorial industry. I purchased a small residential company on the east coast of Florida many years ago and that was my first venture into the industry. My company had six employees at the time and was operating in a geographically small area and provided residential services only. In order to grow the volume that I wanted, I knew I had to expand my geographic market area and add to the services I provided. I worked to grow by expanding into four surrounding counties, eventually becoming a regional company, and added commercial and post-construction cleaning to my menu of services. When I sold the company many years later to pursue coaching and consulting full-time, I had 145 employees, including five supervisors, a general manager, and three office staff. Phew! I love the work that I've been doing over the past many years, working with business owners who have growth and profit in their sites. I've been called by some a turnaround specialist, so yes, I can fix things too. And I welcome a challenge no matter what obstacles an owner might face. One question I hear often and see on social media a lot by owners is how much do I charge? What should I charge for this or that? I'm not sure if I'm charging too much or too little. Charging the right amount for your service is a cornerstone to making profit. This is one of the most important pieces of a well-run profitable cleaning service and I'm here to help you understand it today. So let's jump right into this important topic. You know, pricing jobs profitably is one of the most important skills an owner must learn if growing a successful company is part of your plan. And let's hope it is. If you spend any time on social media or in Facebook groups, you'll see this question asked every day in almost every group. What should I charge for this size space? Or I don't want to charge too much. Wow, chances are great, more often than not, that you'll be undercharging rather than overcharging. And that's a huge problem as well. This is one area of your business that you must excel in if you're to succeed and be profitable. This is a skill that can and must be learned. It's not a question to ask your friends in the industry or on social media or uh, in estimating software or even by guessing at a number. To take any of those roads can set you up for future failure and leave profit dollars behind. Having input from others may be harmless, but unless they know what your business needs to make a profit, it's not a source for pricing. Once you learn to price jobs profitably yourself using market research, your own numbers, knowledge of your employees' productivity and your expenses, you won't have to post the question on social media, how much should I charge? You'll already know. So let's reiterate, the art of pricing your services profitably is the number one skill all business owners need to master. It's easy to price jobs for zero or no profits or even experience losses, but then you wouldn't be here long if you operated that way. Learning to price jobs profitably becomes a priority for owners who don't have a lot of experience in this area or are consistently losing money on jobs and don't know why. It's truly more important to your business than getting new business. 
until you have pricing down and you know that every job will be profitable, getting a steady stream of new business becomes futile. The graphic on the screen indicates three of the key elements of most businesses. While each one is important in the overall operation of your business, in the order we have placed here, you'll see great emphasis on estimating and financials because unless those are right, the other two pieces of the pie won't matter. Once you know how to price jobs profitably and what to charge, you won't ever again have to ask someone, how much should I charge? You may have to ask a professional for help when pricing a job, however, that's out of the norm or something that you haven't done before. But for routine work, asking someone else to give you what they would charge will no longer happen. As important as it is to know where to get information about prices, it's equally important to know where not to get pricing information. If you use social media as your source for getting a number to charge a customer for your services, we have a little work to do here. And here's why. The only numbers that work in pricing your services are your numbers. When you ask someone else, or everyone for that matter, in a social media group, to give you an answer to pricing, you'll get numbers that span a large range. And that's because everyone who is giving you numbers has different costs, different competition, different labor expenses, different demographics, different insurance costs, and on and on. Truthfully, those numbers aren't relevant whatsoever to what you need to charge. Prices for these items vary from city to city across the country. And to set your pricing based on someone else's costs means it's time to put in the hard work to learn your own numbers and what you have to charge your customers to make a profit in your market, not someone else's. Making profit is the reason you're in business, unless of course you're a charitable organization in which case your goal is not to make profit. Too many times we don't make profit because we underbid, we lose money, and we don't know why. Most business owners know and understand the reason we want to make profit. Many just don't know how to get it. So when you ask someone else to give you a number to price a job, you're leaving the control of your profit and or loss to them. You're taking at face value what they would charge in their area, not knowing any of your costs, expenses, or even market demographic. It's like the old saying, let's throw the spaghetti against the wall to see what will stick. Remember, without profit, you don't have a business. So where do we start? Damon John of Shark Tank fame suggests that lack of financial intelligence is the number one thing that will cause business failure. And I agree. So first, do the math. As much as many of us dislike math, and I hear it all the time, or we, quote, aren't good with numbers, it's a necessary evil that's required by all business owners, from the least to the most experienced, if making a profit is your goal, that is. Let's start with the basic math you must know. Things like figuring percentages, learning benchmark numbers for our industry. Once you've mastered how to calculate percentages, it's time to move on to understanding all the expenses in your business. There are two types of expenses in every service business, whether it's cleaning, landscape, pest control, pool services. The model for calculating profit and estimating jobs is the same. The two types of expenses are variable, some kind, sometimes called direct expenses, and fixed expenses, sometimes called indirect. We'll talk a little more about that later. Variable expenses are the costs that are directly related to the cleaning that is done. In other words, it is the cost 
of their cleaner's labor. Fixed costs are the costs you have each month, whether you have 10 jobs that month or 100 jobs that month. So let's take a closer look. The cost to get work done or your cleaning labor is of course the biggest variable expense you have and it is the most controllable. Having high labor costs is caused by one of two possibilities, either underpricing or out of control hours spent on accounts. And in many times, both of these causes are at fault. Knowing your cost of labor, along with the related payroll taxes and controlling it can make or break your company's profit. This applies more when paying employees by the hour than when paying on a commission basis. However, underpricing can occur no matter how you pay your people. Also included in your cost of getting the work done is any mileage or travel time you pay, as well as the cleaning supplies you use to complete the work. Here's an example of why the cost of labor matters. A company on the west coast of the country has minimum wages that are very much higher than in the middle or southern parts of the US. If they both charged customers the same rate, the business paying the higher wage would have a lower profit. In this case, the high wage company has to have a higher charge to the customer in order to keep their labor costs on budget, pay their bills, and have profit left over. Every business owner should know their current and year to date labor cost percentage as this clearly impacts how much you charge. Do you know your current labor cost percentage? When determining what you should charge, you must not only know what hourly wages and taxes you are paying, you must also know how many hours you are allocating for the job. It's necessary to determine an estimate of time needed to complete the work in order to give an estimate. Time spent on the job and money charged for the job go hand in hand, even when you give the customer a flat rate price. A flat rate price is still based on estimated hours to clean, just as is an hourly price. Here's the secret to profit. The real time spent on the job must equal the time you allocated when setting the price. Let me repeat that. The real time spent on the job must equal the time you allocated when you set a price. So we'll, you will never make money if, for example, you charge the customer for five hours of cleaning and you allow the cleaning technicians to stay for seven hours. You'll always be upside down in pricing if you don't control the labor hours and match those with what you are charging. The only scenario where this is different somewhat is when you pay percentage of the job to the cleaning technicians. In that case, you are somewhat protected by the percentage because your tech will receive the same amount of money whether he or she stays three hours, five hours, or seven hours. After looking at your variable expenses, labor and payroll taxes, your other expenses, which are called fixed expenses, will be those expenses that you have every month such as rent, utilities, uh, maybe uniforms, advertising costs, and so forth. These are expenses that don't have anything to do with the actual cleaning of properties. They may vary somewhat, but generally not as much as direct labor costs. One tip here is that wages for office personnel and owners, unless an owner is cleaning, should never be mixed in with cleaning labor. Keep the cleaning cost numbers separate from any fixed cost. The goal here is to identify and monitor the cost of labor to get the work done. Here's an example of some fixed costs you may have. Advertising or SEO, social media management, 
rent, utilities, vehicle, uh, software, hardware, uh, new equipment, as well as office staff wages, owner salary, uniforms. You may have an employee who splits time between working in the field, perhaps supervising or cleaning, and working in the office. This would be a person who is regularly scheduled to spend hours cleaning and hours in administration. Be certain that for this employee, you divide those hours into cleaning labor costs and admin costs so you get a true picture of your labor expenses. So don't put your profit in someone else's hands. When you ask someone else to tell you what you should charge, you're taking a huge risk. They are pricing the job the way they would for their business, which means you have no idea what their expenses are or how they compare to yours. Maybe they don't pay rent or and you do. Maybe they spend very little on advertising and you spend more. Perhaps they have two people in their office and you have one part-timer. All are variables which dramatically affect the profit you make or don't make on a job. By de depending on another owner to give you a price or relying on an opinion by someone who knows nothing about your operation or your business financials to tell you how to price a job is a sure road to lost profit and often miscalculated pricing. This is a skill that owners must develop and use day in and day out. If it's an unusual situation and you want the advice of a professional who knows the right questions to ask you before they help you with pricing, that's a different scenario. The only numbers you safely can use for pricing jobs are yours. So if you don't know them, learn them quickly in order to grow a profitable business. And please think twice before jumping on a Facebook group and asking how much you should charge or what is the going rate for such and such. There is no such thing. The answers you find there could hurt your business more than help it. So learn your own numbers. Whether you're an experienced owner or just starting out, it's important to get help with operational tasks and clerical functions as your company grows. How many office staff you have and what positions they hold varies from company to company based on your size and stage of growth. The administrative costs in your company can be a source of profit drain if they are not highly productive, or if there are too many people, or if they cost too much. These costs can quickly become the largest fixed expense you have and play a big role in determining how much you'll charge in order to be profitable. A good administrative person is like gold and frees the owner from tasks that take away time that could be spent in strategic planning and growing the business. A weak admin person, however, who isn't necessarily productive or who can cause drama in your office or even may be overpaid can take up payroll dollars that could be better used somewhere else. So non-income producing employees need clear job descriptions and training, then monitoring their costs from a percentage point. To bring in office staff without clear direction and oversight can cause your fixed expenses to rise, which then can cause your prices to rise to accommodate the position. What percent of sales is your office staff costing? Knowing your numbers means knowing how to read three basic financial reports. Of course, there are several other reports and key profit indicators that are important, but the three key financial reports include the cash flow report, the balance sheet, and of course the Mac Daddy of all, which is the profit and loss statement, sometimes called an income statement. The P&L is your roadmap to profit for both the future and analyzing past performance. Learning to read and understand it will quickly tell you why you cannot rely on someone else to give you a number or to help you charging for your services. 
Your numbers are your numbers, and they represent the reality of your business, not the reality of someone else's business who may have a totally different set of circumstances and therefore very different numbers to enter into the equation. If your profit and loss report is a mystery to you, or you don't understand what it means, you could be underpricing, losing money, and not knowing why. While we could talk for hours on reading and understanding what the profit and loss statement tells you, I'm going to give you the very short version. We have here a very basic and simplified explanation of the elements of a profit and loss statement. Simply put, the profit and loss statement shows sales you have made for a time period. Let's say it's it can be a day, it can be a week, it can be a month, it can be a year. It then subtracts the labor costs, or what we're calling direct expenses, that you paid to bring those sales in, giving you what's called gross profit. From gross profit, all of your regular fixed expenses, those that you have every month, like rent, advertising, and so forth, are subtracted in order to give you the net profit of the company for that time period. Whenever you run reports, always show the percent to sales for accurate monitoring. Here's a, a simple example. Let's say you have a $100 clean. Your labor costs are $40, including taxes. That means your labor cost actually is 40%. Your fixed expenses are 35% or $35. After adding together our 40 and our 35, you have a total of $75 in expenses, giving you a net profit of $25 or 25%. Now let's imagine that you price this job at $90 instead of 100. Your labor costs are still 40 <clears throat> and our fixed expenses are still 35. So we will still have our $75 in expenses but we will have only charged $90 for the job, leaving us a profit of $15. If for some reason the cleaning tax go over the estimated hours you've given, the profit will be even lower because the labor costs are higher. They all work together. Do these calculations on the next estimates you give and run them also on a random selection of recent estimates. Here's a tip. In order to find what your overhead percentage is, use the expense percentage shown on your most recent profit and loss statement. They can range anywhere from 15% up to 35% and in some cases more, depending on what expenses you have. There is also software that can help you arrive at a price. However, the software you use will be only as good as the information you input. So it all comes back to knowing your own numbers. Another factor involved with what to charge is the pricing model you use. The two most common pricing models for setting prices are charging by the hour or charging a flat rate. There is a third that isn't commonly used in the residential section of the industry, and that is charging by the square foot which is often used for in carpet cleaning and or commercial cleaning. We've already discussed the fact that all pricing models, time and money are directly tied together. Every price you give, regardless of hourly or flat rate or even square footage, is based on how long it takes and how much you charge for that time. Let's look at hourly rate charging first. When you use hourly charging, you'll determine a rate that's competitive yet profitable. Do some research in your market area to get a range of rates that other like companies, companies like yours, are charging. Based on who your target is, set your hourly rate high enough to attract those in your target market and competitive enough to close sales. If an exclusive luxury customer is your target, you won't want to be the lowest price in town. Remember that high-end homes and Class A offices have high-end furnishings and surfaces. You want to make certain that the fees you charge match with the liability and risk exposure you are taking on. 
the higher of risk you're taking, the higher the price to the customer. If your target is a middle level income, you may be able to adjust your price to be attractive to that market. Most companies don't have different pricing rates for different levels of income and lifestyle, just differences in the time needed to complete the cleaning. You'll want to make certain the risk matches the reward. Setting a minimum fee for service is a standard practice. There is a basic cost to the business anytime you send someone out to clean, whether it's a home or an office. Once that minimum has been met, it could be two hours or three hours, depending on your situation. The rest of the fees you charge go toward labor expenses and profit. For example, we've all had customers who want you to come in and clean for an hour or to do a kitchen and bath situation only. If you were to honor those requests, your profit would be low or even non-existent because the income you get from that small job leaves little room for covering expenses or profit. So be sure you have a minimum price you charge to clean a property. It's easy enough to find out what the competition in your area is charging by making a few phone calls. And while you don't want to base your rates on what the competition is doing, it's good information to help you be in the game in your market. Your hourly rate will be higher than private individual cleaners because they're charging for labor only. Remember, they're charging for those direct costs we mentioned before. While you have business expenses to include, they aren't your competition and you shouldn't spend time including them in your research. Flat rate pricing means that your estimating skills must be exact, otherwise you'll lose money. In this model, you'll set a fee or flat rate based on your estimated time to complete the work. The important piece here is that your cleaning tax must stay within that budget of time, of course, unless they're paid on a commission basis. This is where flat rate pricing can get costly. When there's a disconnect between the time you estimated for the job and the time actually spent cleaning the space, you can be heading for a loss on the job. Budget of time versus actual time spent becomes the battle of profit or no profit. For example, what happens when you estimate the job to be four hours and you give the customer a flat rate of $160? The techs cleaning the space haven't been well trained or even told how much time they can use. And so they take five and a half hours to get the job done. Guess what just happened? That extra hour and a half labor cost came right out of your profits. Two things come into play here. Your estimate of time has to be accurate and your people have to be told how long they can stay as well as being trained in high efficiency technique so that they can get the job done in the time allowed. This brings us to our next piece of profitability and pricing and that is the productivity of your people. So you might ask, why is knowing your productivity rate a big deal? And what exactly is a productivity rate? Truthfully, it's the first step in beginning to know what to charge. A productivity rate is the rate of speed with which your cleaning crews clean. This is measured by the square feet per hour that an individual technician can clean. Unless you have knowledge of how fast or how slowly your technicians move, you won't be able to accurately determine how much time it will take to clean a space. It does you no good to use industry standard formulas, and there are plenty of them out there, or anyone else's advice for what to charge unless you know your own productivity rates. National industry averages vary by the types of cleaning being done. Residential cleaning has a much lower square foot per hour rate than commercial cleaning, while post-construction cleaning is even lower. They are all different, and that said, there are benchmarks that can be used for comparison. In fact, however, what really matters in pricing is how fast or slowly your own people can move through a space. 
if your price if your price on a job is based on what someone else told you your price can be way off because their productivity rate may be lower or higher than yours so their employees may be moving faster or slower than yours Learning your own productivity rate average and using it is the only way to profitably set pricing for your business. It all works together. Knowing the rate of speed your employees clean determines how long it will take to clean the space. Once you know an estimated length of time to clean, you can assign a dollar amount to that time and know that your price will be fairly accurate. There are variables, of course, which will affect the time spent on the job, and those have to be considered as well. Things such as pets, number of people living in the home, children in the home, clutter, expectation of the customer, including detail and possible rooms eliminated. These are some of the variables, and they are different, of course, for each customer and will affect the time spent. Productivity rates for the residential segment of the industry range from 500 square feet an hour to upwards of 900 square feet an hour. As a comparison, commercial cleaning rates are typically from 2,000 square feet an hour up to 4,000 square feet, and in some highly competitive spaces, they are approaching 6,000 square feet an hour. This would be a wide open space, and just to note, the level of quality can diminish as the square feet per hour increases. The image on the slide shows the process. Knowing the productivity rate of your technician helps determine the hours needed to clean. And once we have the hours, we apply an hourly rate and come up with a price. Here's a closer look at examples of how productivity rates affect time needed on a job and of course then pricing. Using the same square footage home that we show on the slide, we have three sample productivity rates. All of these times are for one cleaner. If you have a team of two, the time is of course divided by two. If you have a team of three, the time is divided by three. So you can see here, our first example has a productivity rate of 700 square feet an hour on average. So they can complete this space in three hours. The second example shows a faster moving team at 900 square feet an hour, getting the space cleaned in 2.23 hours. And finally, a slower moving team at a rate of 500 square feet an hour and for this team, the job is taking 4.2 hours. If your company is number one, for example, and cleaning at 700 square feet an hour, your price at $40 an hour would be $120. Now let's say you get into social media or you get into a group or ask someone else what you should charge for ongoing service and you get answers from 90 to $90 to $140. You perhaps got an answer from someone whose productivity rate is 900 square feet an hour and another from a slower company whose rate is 500 square feet an hour. There's a huge variance of 200 square feet an hour between example one and example three and almost 400 square feet an hour between example two and three. While your square foot per hour doesn't have to be exact, it needs to be close enough to help you determine how much time you will need when estimating a job. The average productivity rate is based on your company averages, which you can get by taking a random sampling of five various sized homes or offices. You must know the square footage of each one. Locate the time records um, that you have for what it's taking to clean currently for each of the samples. Add together the square footage of all the sample spaces. Then add together all the hours used to clean by your cleaning staff. Divide the square footage by the hours to get the average productivity rate for your current staff. Update and recheck the numbers every quarter or so. You'll identify quickly if you need to increase productivity through training and technique. Let's look at an example. 
Take a closer look at this example of how to calculate productivity rates. Add together the sample square footages, in this case 10,000. Then add together all the hours used to clean this square footage, 17 hours. Divide the hours into the square footage to get your own productivity rate. In this case, we're showing 588 approximately square feet an hour. Take several random samplings from various cleaning technicians and teams until you're comfortable with the result. It will be eye-opening. You might find one team or individual is a standout and gives the highest productivity, but perhaps they get more complaints. While another team or individual is slower, but complaint-free. It's data about your company that you need to know to help with not only estimating, but the quality of your training as well. Let's do a quick recap of what we've discussed about the elements going into charging for the work you do. The important pieces of the pricing puzzle, which are know your expenses and rely on only the information pertinent to your company, such as labor costs, expenses, market competition, growth, expansion, and not advice you get from someone else. If using software for pricing, make certain the data you input is accurate and up to date. Decide on your pricing model, either by the hour or by the flat rate. You can always use a combination of both depending on the job. Determine a minimum fee to even leave your office. Avoid running all over town for an hour here or there or two hours on the other side of town. Set a minimum fee and stick to it. Know your own productivity rate and work to continuously improve this. Do it by training and having the right equipment and tools. When you encounter an unusual job or type of property you haven't done before, use the numbers we've discussed and work through logically how to arrive at a profitable price. Seek the advice of an experienced professional coach who can help guide you through the steps to make sure you're covering all bases. By mastering the number one skill of profitable pricing with confidence, you'll never again put anyone else in control of your profit. Make every effort to learn the important skill of how to price and estimate jobs yourself. Avoid putting your opportunities out on social media or elsewhere, asking for prices from people across the country. If you avoid that, you will avoid disasters in pricing that I see every day when people don't know their own numbers or how to arrive at a profitable price themselves. This is your job as a business owner and the number one skill you must learn. And then once you've learned it and you remove it from your plate, it becomes your job to teach the skill to whomever you have delegated this role. Be in control of your profit by knowing your numbers and pricing profitably. Thank you so much for your attention during this session. Should you have questions or want a complimentary discovery call about your business and profit picture, please contact me using the information on the slide. I'm offering the first five people who contact me after attending the session an expanded complimentary 30-minute session with me to be scheduled at our mutual convenience. Thank you, and I look forward to hearing from you all.